For as long as we can remember, Kevin Costner has remained a Hollywood legend, known for his iconic roles and enduring presence on the big screen. But lately, things aren't looking so good for the star. From personal challenges to professional setbacks, Costner's life seems to be taking a turn that has left fans and critics alike concerned. What's really going on behind the scenes with this beloved actor? Today, we're diving into the troubles surrounding Kevin Costner, exploring the events that have cast a shadow over his once glittering career. This is one story that is as unexpected as it is unsettling. Kevin Costner was born on January 18, 1955 in Linwood, California. He spent his childhood in Compton, California with his parents, William and Sharon Costner. Kevin was the youngest of three boys, but sadly the middle child passed away at birth. His mom, Sharon, worked as a welfare worker while his dad, William, had a job as an electrician and later became a utilities executive. Costner's family roots go back to German immigrants in the 1700s, along with some English, Irish, Scottish, and Welsh heritage. Raised in a Baptist home, Kevin wasn't too interested in academics, but he did love sports, especially football. He also dabbled in piano lessons, wrote poetry, and even sang in the church choir. One of his early influences was the movie How the West Was Won, which sparked his passion for Westerns. You see, Kevin's teenage years were a bit of a roller coaster. His dad's career meant the family moved around California, causing Kevin to change schools frequently. He lived in Ventura and then Visalia, attending Mount Whitney High School, where he joined the marching band. Later, he graduated from Villa Park High School in 1973, where he played baseball and even had Dennis Burt, a future MLB pitcher, as a teammate. After high school, Costner earned a bachelor's degree from California State University, Fullerton, in 1978. During his time there, he joined the Delta Chi fraternity. But it wasn't until his final year of college that he got interested in acting and dancing. In 1978, while on his honeymoon in Puerto Vallarta, Kevin had a chance encounter that would change his life. On the flight back home, he met actor Richard Burton. Kevin, unsure about pursuing acting, asked Burton for advice. Burton not only encouraged him to go for it, but also reassured him that it was possible to have a stable personal life as an actor. Inspired by this meeting, Kevin decided to dive into acting. After agreeing to take a marketing job, Kevin started taking acting classes five nights a week with the full support of his wife. The marketing job didn't last long, only 30 days. To make ends meet while pursuing his dream, Kevin took on various jobs, from working on fishing boats to driving trucks and even giving tours of Hollywood stars' homes. These jobs helped fund his acting classes while he went on auditions. Kevin Costner's first film role was in Sizzle Beach, USA, which was actually shot in 1978 to 79, but wasn't released until 1981. And even then, it didn't gain much attention until a re-release in 1986. Due to these release issues, many people mistakenly thought his first film was The Touch. In 1982, Costner had a minor role in the Ron Howard film Night Shift. He played frat boy Hash One during a wild party scene in the New York City morgue. Though it was a small part, it was one of his earliest appearances on the big screen. In 1983, Costner appeared in a commercial for the Apple Lisa and had small roles in Table for Five and the nuclear holocaust film Testament. Around this time, he was also cast in The Big Chill. Although his scenes as Alex, the deceased friend, were ultimately cut from the film, this project connected him with director Lawrence Kasdan, who promised to give Costner a role in a future project. That promise materialized with the film Silverado, which became a breakout role for Costner. The same year he starred in the smaller films Fandango and American Flyers, and appeared alongside Kiefer Sutherland in an episode of Steven Spielberg's Amazing Stories. But he was just getting started. His big break came in 1987 when he starred as federal agent Elliot Ness in The Untouchables. That same year, he also played the lead in the thriller No Way Out. These films catapulted him to movie star status. 
He followed this up with two baseball-themed films that further solidified his place in Hollywood, Bull Durham and Field of Dreams. In 1990, Kevin partnered with producer Jim Wilson to form TIG Productions, and their first film was the epic Dances with Wolves. Costner directed and starred in the film, which went on to receive 12 Academy Award nominations, winning seven, including Best Picture and Best Director for Kevin himself. This achievement established him as a serious player in the industry. Not ready to rest on his laurels, in 1991, Kevin took on the iconic role of Robin Hood in Robin Hood Prince of Thieves. Despite mixed reviews, the film was a massive box office hit. He then starred as District Attorney Jim Garrison in Oliver Stone's controversial political thriller, JFK. The film stirred up quite a bit of debate over its historical accuracy, but Kevin's performance was praised, earning him a Golden Globe nomination. The following year, Kevin starred opposite Whitney Houston in The Bodyguard, a film that became a pop culture phenomenon. He continued his successful run with A Perfect World, directed by Clint Eastwood, where Kevin played a criminal on the run. Though his character was far from menacing, his gentle charisma won over audiences. Kevin's career took a hit with the release of Waterworld. This sci-fi post-apocalyptic film was criticized for its high production costs and mixed reviews. While the movie eventually made money, it wasn't the hit Kevin had hoped for. Things got worse with The Postman, which he directed and starred in. The film was a commercial flop and was heavily panned by critics, even winning several Golden Raspberry Awards, including Worst Picture and Worst Director. However, not everything during this period was amiss. In 1996, Kevin starred in the golf comedy Tin Cup, directed by Ron Shelton, who had also directed him in Bull Durham. The movie was well received and reminded audiences of Kevin's knack for playing charming everyman characters. Around this time, Kevin was set to play the lead role in Air Force One, but decided to focus on finishing The Postman instead, ultimately handing the role to Harrison Ford. In 1999, he starred in Message in a Bottle alongside Robin Wright, based on Nicholas Sparks's novel. The film received mixed reviews but did okay at the box office. Kevin's career started to bounce back in 2000 with 13 Days, where he portrayed Kenneth O'Donnell, a key advisor during the Cuban Missile Crisis. In 2003, he directed and starred in the Western Open Range, which was well received by critics and did surprisingly well at the box office. This marked a return to form for Kevin, especially in the Western genre. He followed this up with a strong supporting role in The Upside of Anger, where he played a retired baseball player. The performance earned him critical praise and several award nominations, proving that Kevin still had a lot to offer. Kevin continued to work steadily, starring in films like The Guardian and Mr. Brooks, where he took on the role of a serial killer. In 2008, his production company, TIG Productions, was rebranded as Treehouse Films. The same year, he starred in Swing Vote. This political comedy showcased his ability to blend humor with drama. In 2010, Kevin appeared in The Company Men, alongside Ben Affleck and Tommy Lee Jones. The film, which premiered at the Sundance Film Festival, received positive reviews, although it didn't achieve major commercial success. In 2011, Kevin Costner announced his plan to direct A Little War of Our Own, marking his return to directing after seven years. With his impressive track record, there was no doubt he had what it took to make the film a success. Additionally, he was set to reunite with director Kevin Reynolds for Learning Italian, further raising expectations among fans. A Little War of Our Own is a World War II action-adventure story featuring Costner as a small-town sheriff striving to maintain peace while the world is at war. The script, penned by Dan Gordon, captured the attention of Costner and producer Armian Bernstein, leading them to cast the film's other lead role, a German U-boat commander. Despite the initial excitement surrounding these projects, no updates have been released since their original production announcements. Costner's fans are still eager to see the actor-director bring these stories to life. 
Around this same time, Kevin made a special appearance in Funny or Die's Field of Dreams 2, NFL Lockout, poking fun at his iconic role in Field of Dreams. He then portrayed Jonathan Kent, Superman's adoptive father, in Zack Snyder's Man of Steel, a reboot of the Superman franchise. No doubt Kevin Costner's career has had its share of highs and lows, but one of the most significant comebacks in his career was with the 2012 miniseries Hatfields and McCoys. In this three-part series, Costner took on the role of Devil Ants Hatfield, the patriarch of the Hatfield family, in the infamous feud with the McCoys. The miniseries, which aired on the History Channel, was based on the true story of one of the most legendary family feuds in American history. The intense rivalry between the Hatfields and the McCoys spanned decades and nearly escalated into a full-scale war between the states of Kentucky and West Virginia. The series premiered on May 28, 2012, and was an unexpected hit, drawing in an astonishing 13.9 million viewers. This massive audience made it clear that Costner was back in the game. For many, it was a reminder of the actor's powerful presence on screen and his ability to take on complex characters. The role of Devil Ants Hatfield was one that required a deep understanding of the rugged, unforgiving nature of life in the Appalachian Mountains during the late 19th century, and Costner delivered a performance that was both intense and nuanced. Costner's portrayal of Hatfield earned him widespread acclaim, and he was recognized with several prestigious awards. In 2012, he won the Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Miniseries or a Movie, a significant achievement that underscored his return to the forefront of the entertainment industry. The following year, he was honored with the Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Performance by a Male Actor in a Miniseries or Television Movie. Additionally, he received the 2013 Golden Globe Award for Best Performance by an actor in a limited series or motion picture made for television. These accolades were proof of Costner's talent and his ability to breathe life into a character that resonated with audiences. The success of Hatfields and McCoys was a turning point for Costner, leading to a series of roles in various film genres. In 2014, he appeared in the spy thriller Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit, where he played Thomas Harper, a mentor to the film's titular character. The same year, Costner starred in the action-packed Three Days to Kill, which allowed him to showcase his skills in a high-stakes environment. He also took on the role of Sonny Weaver Jr. in Draft Day, a sports drama that delved into the world of NFL recruitment. Costner's versatility was further demonstrated when he produced and starred in Black or White, this praise drama tackled issues of race and family. The film premiered at the 2014 Toronto International Film Festival and opened in theaters in 2015. Though it didn't reach blockbuster status, Black or White was praised for its thought-provoking narrative and Costner's heartfelt performance. Continuing his successful streak, Costner played coach Jim White in the 2015 film McFarland, USA. The film, which told the true story of a high school cross-country team in a small California town, was well received for its inspiring message and strong performances. Costner's role as the coach who leads his team to victory was a reminder of his ability to play characters who embody perseverance and dedication. In 2016, Costner took on the role of Al Harrison in Hidden Figures, a film that told the story of three African-American women who worked at NASA during the early days of the U.S. space program. His character, a NASA Space Task Group supervisor, was a fictional composite of various real-life figures, and Costner's portrayal was praised for its depth and subtlety. Hidden Figures was both a critical and commercial success, further solidifying Costner's standing in Hollywood. The following year, Costner starred alongside Jessica Chastain in Molly's Game, marking Aaron Sorkin's directorial debut. The film, based on the true story of Molly Bloom, who ran a high-stakes poker game, allowed Costner to take on the role of Molly's father, a complex character with a strained relationship with his daughter. His performance was once again lauded for its emotional depth. Since 2018, 
Costner has starred in and produced the television series Yellowstone. The show, which centers around the Dutton family and their sprawling Montana ranch, quickly became a massive success. With its mix of drama, intrigue, and the beautiful backdrop of the American West, Yellowstone captured the attention of viewers and became one of the most watched shows on television. For Costner, this marked his first regular role in a TV series, and it has been a defining one, keeping him in the spotlight and introducing him to a new generation of fans. Despite the remarkable success of Yellowstone and other recent projects, Kevin Costner is facing a significant challenge with his latest and most ambitious endeavor, Horizon, an American Saga. This project, a massive four-part Western epic, has been a labor of love for Costner, who has been dreaming of bringing this story to the screen since 1988. Costner not only directed the films, but also starred in them, putting his heart and soul into every aspect of the project. If you follow the show, you will agree that Kevin Costner has a unique knack for storytelling, especially when it comes to capturing the essence of the American West. Yellowstone, with its gripping narrative and complex characters, has already proven that Costner knows how to craft a tale that resonates with audiences. His deep understanding of the rugged landscape, the conflicts between tradition and progress, and the personal struggles of his characters make his work stand out in the genre. Now, with Horizon and American Saga, Costner is pushing his creative boundaries even further. This ambitious project isn't just another Western, it's a culmination of decades of passion and dedication. If you've been captivated by the intricate dynamics and breathtaking cinematography in Yellowstone, you'll likely be thrilled to see how Costner expands these elements in Horizon. The first chapter of Horizon was released in June 2023, but unfortunately it struggled at the box office. Despite a reported budget of $100 million, the film grossed only $24 million worldwide. Its opening weekend was particularly dismal, bringing in just $11 million. For a project that Costner had invested so much in, both financially and emotionally, the results were deeply disappointing. The underperformance of the first chapter led to a difficult decision. Horizon, an American saga, Chapter 2, which was originally scheduled for release in August 2023, was pulled from the theatrical release calendar. Instead of following through with the planned release, Costner and his production company, Territory Pictures, decided to shift their strategy. The focus turned to video on demand in hopes of giving the first chapter more time to build an audience and gain traction. This decision was a significant blow to Costner, who had poured millions of his own dollars into funding the Horizon project. Despite the setback, Costner and Territory Pictures expressed hope that the series would eventually find its audience. In a statement, the company emphasized their belief in the films and their appreciation for the support they had received from fans and theater owners alike. The decision to move away from a theatrical release was not entirely surprising, given the film's poor performance at the box office. However, it was a tough pill to swallow for Costner, who had envisioned Horizon as a sweeping epic that would captivate audiences and leave a lasting legacy in the Western genre. The comparison to films like Dune, where the full story might not be appreciated until all parts are released, offered some comfort, but the uncertainty surrounding the project weighed heavily on him. Critics and industry insiders have been divided on the reasons for Horizon's lackluster performance. Some have suggested that the film's release at Cannes may not have been the best idea, as the film might not have matched the expectations of critics who attended. Others have pointed out that the film's structure, which was designed as a setup for the subsequent chapters, might have left audiences feeling that the story was incomplete. What has made the situation even more challenging is the fact that work on the third installment of Horizon is already underway. However, no release dates have been set for chapters 3 and 4, and Warner Brothers and New Line have yet to acquire the distribution rights for these remaining films. This has added a layer of uncertainty to the already difficult situation. To make matters worse, 
Rumors are circulating that Costner may not appear in the fifth season of Yellowstone due to ongoing legal challenges. The possibility of his absence from the show that has defined his recent career resurgence only adds to the weight of the uncertainty he is currently facing. These professional challenges come on top of significant personal turmoil as well. Costner recently concluded a highly publicized and expensive divorce, further complicating an already difficult period in his life. The financial strain of the divorce, coupled with the immense investment he's made in the Horizon Project, has undoubtedly taken a toll on him. For Costner, this period has been marked by both professional and personal challenges. While the success of Yellowstone has been a bright spot in his career, the struggles with Horizon have cast a shadow over what was meant to be a crowning achievement. The financial and emotional toll of the project, coupled with the ongoing legal issues, has been significant, and the uncertainty about its future looms large. But here's one thing we are sure of. Costner's commitment to his vision is undeniable. He has always been a storyteller who is willing to take risks and push the boundaries of what's possible in film. Horizon was meant to be a testament to that vision, a sprawling, ambitious epic that would stand alongside the great westerns of the past. However, the reality has been far more challenging than Costner could have anticipated.